hello. This is a test of Vidtun text-to-speech capability. I this video we will go through Vidtun. Let's get started. Alright, we will start with Vidtun's homepage which is vidtun.com. From this side you will see all of the information that you need to know about Vidtun. It is basically a video editor with a twist, since it specializes on creating video presentations using 2D cartoon elements. It has pre-created 2D characters which you can use in the video, and select pre-loaded animations that you want that character to do in the video. You can pair it to any background options, add music, create a dialogue audio using its text-to-speech capability, or by recording your own voice, and render the video to an HD resolution. The main target audience of Vidtoon are the ones in the marketing, sales, or information dissemination business, where Vidtoon videos are perfect for, but you can also use Vidtoon for fun storytelling, greetings, and all you can think of actually, that fits to its 2D cartoon style of video creation. Just like the first part of this video that you've seen earlier. All of those were created purely from Vidtoon, and I'll show you how I created that later. Vidtoon is a fairly young software application, which was only released last April of 2020, basically just the same time when the COVID pandemic was booming. When we go to the About Us, we will see that Vidtoon was created by this company called Atlas Web Solutions, which is more than 10 years since it was established and specializes on software as a service solutions. You can see here the founders and leaders of Atlas Web Solutions, if you are interested. And they have a lot of products, which include Vidtoon, which now sells for just 49 US dollars for a lifetime subscription, which is really cheap. Atlas Web Solutions is based on Marrakech, Morocco. To start using Vidtoon, you will need to create an account and log in. I've already created an account, so I just need to log in now. And if you haven't installed Vidtoon yet, you will get this screen. Clicking the access button will take you to the versions of Vidtoon that you want to download. It is available in Mac OS and Windows 32 and 64-bit. I'll choose Windows 64 bit of course. This will now download the installer. The installer is big, with 403 MB in size, and that is a zip file. The actual exe file is about 10 MB more. While that is downloading, from this website, you can go to the marketplace section. From here, you can download or buy resources that you can use for your Vidtoon projects. You have backgrounds, soundtracks, characters and templates here. Some are free, and some will need credits to download. As you can see in my account here, I have 100 credits. Once I used up all of those credits, I can buy more or try to earn free credits as shown in the menu here. You have lots and lots of resources here to choose from. From this site, you also can view your purchases, your resources, and visit the training sections where you can watch short videos on how to use Vidtoon. These videos cover everything, the overview, how to set backgrounds, how to use characters, and more. Okay. I think our download is done. Let's open the zip file. Extract the exe file, and then run it to install. There's nothing special here, just the usual installation process. Since this is a big installer, it might take a few minutes for it to finish. Okay, it's done. Let's check launch, and click finish. You should be able to see a Vidtoon icon on your apps now. Let me pin that to my start menu. Once the app has started, on its first run it will still download more resources, which will take about four and a half minutes. Alright. We're in. Let's put in my email address here and log in. You can either load an existing project, and since I don't have any projects yet, I'll just click new. We can then set the project name and dimension. The presets here are just Facebook video and slideshow, so I'll just choose custom and set it to 1080p 16 by 9 size. Then create. OK. We are now in the video storyboard. From the right side toolbar, the top icon here is for the background. You'll have 40 background options here to choose from, plus the ones in the marketplace that I've shown earlier. The first thing I noticed in Vidtoon UI is, the window is not a normal window screen. It takes the whole screen and goes on top of the taskbar. You can't resize or reposition its screen. It's weird. Another weird thing here is, it lacks tool tips to inform you what the icons here on the right side are. You'll just guess what these icons are, since there's no tool tip at all when hovering the mouse over these icons. Also, my mouse scroll wheel does not affect the scrolling here in the Vidtoon screen. So you will need to drag and drop the scroll bar here to scroll through the items. Not a good start on my UI impressions. All these common Windows functionalities are weirdly not working on the Vidtoon window. The second icon here is the picture media pool. Well, that's how I'll call it since, again, we have no tool tip here to tell us what this icon is. From here you can upload either a PNG, JPG or a GIF format of pictures. All the pictures that you'll download from the stock images will also go here. I'll upload my custom background image here which we'll use. To use this image, you'll need to drag and drop it to the timeline. Then using the red icon here at the bottom right corner, you can drag it to stretch through the timeline. 
Then on the preview screen above, you can reposition and resize the picture. I'll use it to cover the whole video dimension. The next icon is for the characters. We have 15 default items here, and again, you can get more from the marketplace. I hate that the mouse scroll wheel does not work here. I hope the tune fixed this soon. Right now, I need to manually drag and drop the scroll bar to scroll through this list. You can also do a search here. For example, business. There we go, a businessman. To use the character, drag it either to the timeline or to preview screen. Then you can resize and reposition it. By clicking the settings, you can set what animations the character will do, which is really cool. It's just weird that when I choose some options here, the character will totally change into a different one. Like this one. It's now female. Or this one. It's now a curly bearded black man. What happened to the character I choose? Anyway, I think the animations intended for the character itself are only the first five options here. Let's choose this simple talking animation for now. Other than that, you can also set animations on how it will appear and disappear from the frame. And you can also move the character. When you check this, a flag will appear. This red flag indicates the end point of the movement animation. So now when I play this, it will look like this. Cool. Now when we look at the timeline below, you will see different layers for each of the elements. We have one for pictures, one for characters, the scenes, music and other elements. In one type of element, you can stack two or more items as well. As you can see here, in the character type in the timeline, I now have two elements. Also, when you right-click an element, you'll have options on what the red icon in the lower right corner of the element will do. The bottom one is for rotate. So when I choose that, I can rotate the element. Right-click. The top one is for proportional resizing. This is the default. Then right-click again, the middle one is for free resizing of the element. In the settings again of the character, you also have an option here to flip it, which I'll do here so that he will face the businessman, and they will look like they are talking to each other. There we go. The next icon here is the stock pictures and videos. They have many resources here, you just need to do a search to find something that you like, then download it to add to the picture media pool, and use it on your project. Next is the stock icons. Basically the same concept. Let's try to search for subscribe icon. It's a bit slow to load. Not sure if it's my connection. There we go. Let's try to use this play icon here. Next is GIF files. You also need to search here to use something. Let's use the subscribe animated GIF. Let's put some entrance and exit effect on this one and see what it will look like. Nice. Okay. Next is the text. You have an option here for the plain unanimated text which is the first yellow one and some pre-formatted animated texts. Let's try this animated one. When you go to the settings, you can choose the font color of each of the text elements here. Unfortunately, the color is all that you can control here. You cannot resize, reposition, nor change the font face of the text in this animated text set. It's a little too behind compared to other video editors where everything is customizable. Then you can of course change the text value. But since you cannot change the size of the font, you'll need to make sure that the text value will fit. Let's see a preview. Alright. Good enough. Next is the transitions. These are basically the animations you can choose when transitioning from one scene to the other. You can only apply this in between scene. So let's try to apply this to the start of the scene. It does not really show the animation when we play preview it. But when I drag the play pointer, you can see what the transition will look like. Okay, before we go to the text-to-speech feature of VidToon, I want to discuss the scene first. You see this very top layer of just plain color green? I think this is the scene. I was wondering since I start using VidToon, why does the video keep on playing even when it is past all the elements already, and it is playing just black on the video? I believe it is because of this green layer of scene. And the bad news is, I cannot find a way to reduce it or expand it. It seems to be fixed to a 20 second length. When I do not select any element and just this green layer, the settings above is disabled. There's no red icon on its bottom right corner, and I cannot drag or move it. I honestly don't know what to do with it. What if I want to create a video less than 20 seconds, or I want to create a video with a scene that is greater than 20 seconds? This is so limiting. Being fixed with a 20 second video for each scene will be a definite deal breaker for many users. Hopefully this is just a bug, and VidToon will correct it soon. Or if I'm missing anything here, please do let me know in the comments below. Anyway, if you want to add a scene, you can just click the plus icon here, and another scene will be added. Unfortunately, this is another one fixed with a 20 second length. The good thing of having multiple scenes is that the elements are separated from each scenes. 
it is more organized. And to delete the scene, just click the X icon in the scene box. Then confirm by clicking yes. You can also add and delete scenes by going to the last icon here, the S icon. For the audio elements, specifically for narration or dialogues, you can either record your own voice, or use the built-in text-to-speech feature of Vidtoon. To use it, just drag the element to the timeline. Then you can set the length of the audio. Then on the settings, you can select the type of voice. Not much to select here as they only use Microsoft's free text-to-speech voices. Then type in the text you want to convert to speech. Let's play it to test. Hello. This is a test of Vidtoon text-to-speech capability. I this video we will go through vid- Well, it's not that good, but good enough for this test. The next icon here is for background music. There's a lot of stock music here, 41 to be exact. But since you can upload your own music here, you can also upload audio for dialogues or narration here. But I won't do that. I'll try to upload my own background music. This is a long music, but as you can see, I can only stretch it to 20 seconds, since the scene is limited to that length. Let me set the volume to low since this is just a background music. Next icon are the videos. There's no stock video for Vidtoon, but you can upload your own. Let me upload my opening credit. Then you can drag it to the timeline to use it. Oops. I think we should drag it to the video group. There we go. Let me just arrange the elements here so that everything will play after the opening credit video. I'll just fast forward this. We can also do panning shots here. Just click on the first layer. Then click the camera with plus icon on the left of the layer. It will create this brown square here which represents the panning length. You can then reposition and stretch it as you like. Then on preview screen, you can resize and reposition the panning square, which indicates the last position and size. Let's add another one to bring it back to its full size. When you play the video, the preview will only show a square indicator for the panning, it will not show the actual panning happening. You will only see that on the exported video itself. Why don't we save the project now, so we can export it. Okay. To create the video, let's click the Render and Export button at the top. Then select where you want to save the video. By the way, you can only export this to MP4 format, there's no other options. While rendering, do not close the Vidtoon window as it will corrupt the exported video, and probably your project too. Exporting of this 20 second video took 25 seconds, which is not great, as usually, exporting takes faster time than the actual length of the video being exported. But this might just be because the video is too short. It could be a different scenario for longer videos. The file rendered is 21 MB, which is reasonable enough for 1080p format. Let's play it. Hello. This is a test of Vidtoon text to speech capability. There is the panning shot that we added By earlier. This video we will go through Vidtoon. Let's get started. All right. Everything looks great. All right. Now for my thoughts. There's a lot of half-baked functionalities in Vidtoon. Its own window seemed to have its own rules outside of the shell of Microsoft Windows, like being on top all the time, the whole Vidtoon windows can't even be resized nor moved. It does not respond to a mouse scroll wheel, which I think is the most annoying. The scene, for some illogical reason, is fixed to 20 seconds, and cannot be shortened or expanded. Pre-formatted animated text are not fully customizable. The whole editing style is also unusual and needs a big learning curve for many. But, we should also consider that this application is only 3 years old. The likes of Filmora is more than 8 years old, Da Vinci Resolve is even older at more than 9 years old. Clipchimp is young and good, but consider that it is created by Microsoft, which basically has the experience for video editor applications, since the first window-based OS was invented. So I would give it time. If Vidtoon time to gather all the customer feedbacks and improve the product. I'm sure within a span of 2 to 3 years, Vidtoon will be on another level. Another thing to consider is their pricing. Vidtoon is only 49 US dollars for a lifetime license. Just an emphasis on lifetime. Pay 49 dollars and that's it. It's yours forever, along with all the great improvements and enhancements in the future. But the best selling point for me of Vidtoon is it being unique. I know there's a lot of video editors out there, but I don't think any of that has a focus on animated 2D presentations or storytelling. I have never encountered any video editor with a selling point. And that to me, is what makes Vidtoon unique and very much has its own set of market for the people. I myself am very glad that Vidtoon gave me a free license, since I can definitely use this tool for all the animations needed for my YouTube videos. I usually just search for animated GIF, then do the animation in PowerPoint, which takes a lot of time to do. But with Vidtoon, everything will be much easier. If you have $49 to spare, I suggest to try it yourself. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. 
If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobody air.